the title of this message for those of you all who may be here for the first time is confronting the culture confronting the culture hallelujah and there's a culture that is uh, in our society or in our land today that uh, it, it, it tries to infiltrate the people of God's life glory to God and uh, the scripture says that the people of God we are to be in the world but we're not of this world hallelujah we're, we're delegates we're, we're uh, ambassadors we're just passing through for a short period of time amen hallelujah and we're not to pick up the customs uh, of the land or the culture that uh, uh, may be on the, uh, being, being displayed before us uh, on a day to day basis glory to God and, uh, and even as, as uh, the Lord has brought us out of darkness and into his marvelous light and has translated us out of the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of his dear son, that uh, some of the things that were a part of our life, B.C., before Christ, we have to shake loose and let those things go. Amen? And so uh, we endeavor just to, just to enlighten, uh, uh, enlighten you all today uh, through the taught word of God. Amen. Glory to God. Hosea 4 and 6 says, are you all there? Amen. Say amen. All right. Hosea 4 and 6, it says that my people, God's people, we are destroyed for a lack of what? Knowledge. Because we have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me. And because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And last week we said, just to do a recap, we said that it's not that people are really destroyed based on there's a lack of knowledge. There, there's, not, there's not a famine of the word of God in, 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 in the, uh, the culture of the, the times that we live in. There's not. Glory to God. There's, there's not a famine of the word of God. We're not short on the word. We're not short on We have so much revelation that, that our mothers and our fathers that came before us that brought us up in the ways of the Lord that they didn't have. And so, and even if, and even if we didn't, there's, there's things or ways, you know, we can go online and at the click of the mouse, not, knowledge is available to you like that. And so it's not that, that uh, we uh, have a lack of knowledge, but we reject the knowledge that's being presented to us. There's a scripture in the Bible that says the world, they love their own. And sometimes, even as believers, we have dark areas in our lives that the Holy Spirit, he's trying to cooperate with us and work those things out of us. But we have to cooperate with the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit, he is a gentleman. He's, he's, he's not going to kick the door in like the squat team and come in and uproot those things out of your life. He's a gentleman. He's on, he's, he, the scripture says in Revelation, he stands at the door and he knocks. And you have to do the opening on the other side for him to come in and to dine with you or to sup with you. Amen. And so there's, there's not a lack of knowledge, but we reject the knowledge that's being presented. And last week we looked at a scripture in Malachi that says that the lips of priests, that we should keep knowledge. And that's a, that's a twofold application because not only is that in, in the Old Testament reference, it, it, made, uh, it was referring to the high priest, but now the Bible says that we all are priests and kings. Hallelujah. And so our job and objective is to keep knowledge upon our lips. Amen? And so when, when our teenagers or people, they come to us, you know, and they're asking us, well, hey, you know, well, why is this wrong? Well, why is this? And, you know, and this is that and the other. We, we just can't tell these folks just sit down and just be quiet just because I said so. We have to be able to take them through the word of God and show them why this is not profitable unto you. And, and as we present the truth, now you have to make the choice. The ball's in your court now, man. Now you're held accountable to the word that you hear. My, my hands are, are clean of the situation. Now you're accountable to the word that you've heard. And so that's all of our duty and our obligation. But, but Mark, the, the writer, uh, uh, Mark in the gospel, I believe it's the fourth chapter, he said, but it's the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches. It chokes, it strangles the word of God out of our lives. We become so bogged down just with day-to-day -day things that it weighs us down and it chokes out the word. Now, that's amazing to me because the scripture says that heaven and earth is going to pass away and it's only the word that's going to endure forever. And everything you have ever seen and viewed with your own eyes, it's upheld by the word of the power of God. Glory to God. 
And so that, that's amazing to me that just little cares, things that come and divide our, distract us and divide our attention and, and tries to hinder us from, from setting our affections upon the Lord. It's amazing that, that those little things can come and smother. That, that word in the Greek, it means literally to snuff or to smother the word of God out. Amen. And that ought not to be so. Amen. Glory to God. And so we also last week, we defined culture as the customary beliefs or the social forms and material traits of a racial, religious, or social group. It's the set of shared attitudes, values, goals, and practices that characterizes an institution or an organization. It's the set of values or societal practices associated with a particular field, activity, or societal characteristic. Turn with me in your Bibles to Proverbs 18. Picked up from, we'll pick up from where we left off from last week. Proverbs 18 and 21. We've got to confront this culture. Hallelujah. And be on the offense. And take it to the enemy. Amen. Amen. Devil, we're not scared of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18 and 21. Say amen when you get there. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 18 and 21, it reads, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of your tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Now, this is a key, a key scripture that you all, throughout the, the, uh, throughout the duration of the teaching, you have to keep this scripture here in mind. Amen. I said last week, uh, and I'll, I'll say it again, is that the, the, uh, the, the thing that God has given you, the most powerful thing he could have ever given you is right up under your nose. It's called your tongue, your mouth. Amen. God, you know, he said, he did, you know, when there was mass chaos in Genesis 1, he said, let there be light, and there was light. You know, let there be vegetation, and there was vegetation. It's the spoken word of God, the word that, that, that's taking, that, that we take into our spirit, and we, you know, release out of our mouth. That word has power. Amen. James, the half-brother Jesus, he said that the tongue is, is he, he compared it to the rudder of a ship. And you've seen, some of you all have been on these cruise ships, you know, these, these seven, seven level uh, cruise ships from Carnival Cruise or Princess Cruise Lines. And you don't know how that, that, that boat is just floating all through the Caribbean. But it's a little rudder, something you can't see, that's, that's, that's guiding that, that, that huge, massive ship underneath. And likewise, our tongues govern our lives the same way. What you say, it means everything. It means everything. You can pray for healing all you want to. Amen? But if you're constantly saying or confessing, you know, I'm... I, I have cancer. I have. We're not denying the, the fact that there's cancer, but the truth of God's words, oh, oh, it overrides every fact. Amen? We don't deny that that stuff exists or there's sickness. We don't deny that. We just deny the verdict that it tries to pass in our lives. Glory to God. We do our part and let God do the rest. He's the master healer. He's the great physician. He's the great I am. Amen? And so what we say, it means everything. And so when it, that scripture in Proverbs, it said that death and life are in the power of the tongue, that word power in Hebrew is translated, it's a word called yad, Y-A-D. And that's where we get the word yada, means extend your hands. And so what that, that scripture is telling us is that when you open up your mouth and talk, whether you're blessing the Lord or you're, you're talking or whatever you're doing, it's like there's an invisible hand that's working and it's, it's forming and shaping the very thing that you're talking about. Amen? The very things are, that, that, that we have in our life right now are based on what we've been talking about on yesterday. Or what we've been talking about on yesteryear. And so we have to change our, 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 our talk, the way we talk. And we do that by taking the word of God and, and, and putting, depositing it on the inside of us. Amen? And the enemy, because he knows, I mean, he, he was the, he was the, 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 the angel that, that covered the mercy seat of God in heaven, Lucifer. And he knows the power of words. He knows how the word of God works. Glory to God. 
in Matthew 4, if he came and he tempted Jesus with the word, try to twist scripture on the word himself. John 1 says, I, he is the word. The word was with God in the word. He can't try to come and twist the word of God on the word. And so you know if he does that to the word, what is he going to try to do to us? And so you have to have not, not just have a, 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 a logos understanding, but you have to have a rhema of revelation of the word of God in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You've got to understand what this word is talking about. Because the enemy, he's going to fight us with the very two that, that we were designed to chop his, his kingdom down with. Amen.